My name's Dia. I'm the merc you hired. So, what you got for me? A commission? A fight? Armed escort? Whatever it is, you know where to find me. We mercs have one simple rule. Whoever pays the most is your new boss. The desert's a tough adversary, but at least it doesn't hide anything. What you see is what you get, and whether you take on the challenge is entirely up to you. My people are used to the desert life, but still, I hope that one day they'll be able to find an oasis of their own and leave the sandstorms behind for a better life. According to some of the older Aramites, it does actually rain in the desert on occasion, and when it does, it's always a lot heavier than this. Man, his thunder is loud. <laughs> they won't hear us coming. Ooh, or vice versa. Ugh, are you kidding me? This is even colder than the nights in the desert. Ah, sun's out, gun's out. <laughs> Just sucks that I got so much work to do. Wind's picking up. Let's play it safe and pitch camp downwind of our target. Stay close. No going off on your own. The desert doesn't take prisoners. Ready to roll? Good. Then let's pack up and move out. Where, Where did the morning go? All right. As soon as I see a good spot, I'll set up the stove and cook us some lunch. You're still working at this hour? Ugh. And I thought we mercs had it tough. It's late. Go get some rest. I'll take the night watch. The Aramites is just a title. Any mercenary in Sumeru can call themselves a member. Sadly, you get some mercs throwing the term around to take advantage of outlanders who don't know any better. <laughs> We've got those jerks to thank for the increasingly abysmal reputation we have these days. Kusela was his name. As a merc, he had a slapdash way of working, and a whole lot of bravado. But he also saved me from the desert, and did whatever he could to pass on to me everything he had. Without him, I wouldn't be who I am today. Your recent feats have been doing the rounds, you know. In my brigade alone, a lot of people have been talking about the things you've achieved. <laughs> I've even had several people ask me if I can introduce them to you. Friends? Uh, I don't know. After everything we've been through, all the battles we faced together, somehow friends just doesn't quite do it justice. I think... Mm, yeah, comrades in arms sums it up best for me. The bond we share can only be forged in the heat of battle. It's one of the most unbreakable bonds there is. How's my life changed since getting my vision? Huh. Well... Obviously, it gives me an extra edge in battle, but honestly, the biggest thing for me is that it's helped me bring a few more mercs into the Blazing Beasts. You know Ajilenak nuts, right? I used to go crazy for them as a kid, but my dad was the worst at shelling them. He'd just hack them to pieces with his knife, leaving a bunch of inedible mush behind. In the end, he'd salvage what he could by scraping pieces of the flesh off the shell and mixing it with some milk and calling it porridge. <sighs> I do miss the taste of that porridge sometimes. And I miss that old nutcracker, too. A lot of people see the red vulture as an omen of death and disaster because it feeds on the carcasses of the dead. But the way it soars high above the desert, I've always seen it as a symbol of the tenacity of life. I wonder what the great red sand looks like from all the way up there. <laughs> the one that got away. I came this close to doing a job for that guy. A contact put us in touch. I was supposed to be his guide through the desert for some kind of investigation. But then it got cancelled out of the blue. No idea why. Wait, actually, uh, I think there was something about him not being good with the heat. I'm not sure, but it could have been that. <laughs> you know... 
I always thought the Academia's worse were just a bunch of greedy dogs, each fighting for their slice of the pie. Nope. Turns out they were a vicious pack of wolves who betrayed the whole nation. If you want my opinion, Lesser Lord Kusanali was too good to them. Those animals didn't deserve her mercy. She should have broken every single bone in their bodies. Instead, they got a nice little vacation in the rainforest. To say they got off lightly is just putting it mildly. Ah, Candace. I love her to bits. But she can be as stubborn as a sumpter beast sometimes. I keep telling her she ought to cut herself some slack, take some time off, maybe go take a walk around Sumeru City, buy herself some nice new clothes or jewelry. But she always says the same old thing. She can't bear to leave the village unprotected. <sighs> I don't know how many times she's turned me down now. Ugh, if I really can't persuade her, I guess I'll just have to watch the village for her sometime and get one of my Aramite girls to take her shopping. He offered me a position in the academia once. I declined. Working in a place like that would bore me to death. He, on the other hand, is exactly the kind of person I can imagine working there. Always talking in long, convoluted sentences and in that snooty tone. Tch. The General Mahamatra? <laughs> doesn't suffer fools gladly, and certainly doesn't beat around the bush. Having seen the way he works, he gets a thumbs up from me. Now that the whole saga with the academia is over, I guess she can finally dance as much as she wants. She offered me some of her face powder last time I saw her, but in this line of work, it'd be wasted on me. So I told her to give it to Candace instead. Hmm, I wonder how she's liking it. I need to go check sometime. Ah, the famous merchant. I've heard that her prices aren't cheap, but is it true that she can get a hold of anything you want? <laughs> then I should start talking to her, because uh, some of the supplies we mercs need are impossible to get anywhere else on the market, no matter what you're willing to pay. Ah, the sleepy girl. Yeah, I think I remember her. I ran into her once at an oasis on the outskirts of the desert. She was out with some group from the academia doing astronomical observations or something. I wasn't really paying attention. Huh? C Candace? It what now? Emissary from the stars? It the heck is that all about? Almost sounds like she didn't wake up before getting out of bed. I've lived around Aramites my whole life. As a little girl, I had a wooden sword for a toy. Everyone I knew growing up was either a merc or on their way to becoming one. And even the bowls we ate our meals from were carved by mercenary blades. After an upbringing like that, <laughs> it'd be more surprising if I didn't become a merc when I grew up, right? Where do I feel like I belong? Mm, no idea. I've never thought about that sort of thing before. If I had to pick... Uh, I've lived most of my life in the desert, so I guess that makes me a desert dweller. Being a merc is tough. The work itself is one thing, but the worst part is trying to get your client to pay you after you finish the job. The Academia's top of my list. They're pretty straightforward. The Adventurer's Guild isn't too bad either, but trading merchants can be a total nightmare. They're always telling me that their funds are tied up, so cash is tight, yada yada. Just a few more days, they say. <sighs> if cash is so tight, how would you pay for that big pile of goods on your cart, hmm? <sighs> the Academia have taken a kinder view of us since everything that went down. I heard that they even released a ton of new regulations to support the desert folk. <laughs> It'd take me till the end of time to read and understand all that documentation. I just hope from now on, the Wall of Samiel will only mark the place where sandstorms end, rather than my folks' hopes and dreams. Most mercs are looking to make their fortune and leave their mark. They take on the hardest jobs they can find, hoping to earn as much mora and prestige as possible. Some are lucky enough to survive and become legends, while others disappear into the desert before anyone's learned their name. I don't have any grand aspirations, though. I just want to keep the people I care about safe, 
so they can live their lives in peace. Of course, I won't complain if I can make some extra mora along the way. <laughs> I love my makeup box. Sometimes I take it out and reorganize it when I have the time. I keep all my powders and brushes in here, pay top mora for all of it. Just look at this texture. Isn't it just perfectly smooth? And even if you sweat or get caught in the rain, it doesn't run. <laughs> you get what you pay for. Some clients are behind on their payments again, and a few of the guys got themselves into trouble during their last job. <sighs> I'm not the boss, but somehow everything ends up being my problem. Candied Ajelainok nuts. No contest. Easy to take on the road, and of course, delicious. Anything bitter. Nope. Keep it away from me. Can't stand it. This tastes amazing. I'd better not have any more, or I'll never be able to go back to my usual rations. Hmm, not bad. Compared to rations, anyway. You know, um, if nothing else, it's a uh, filling, and if it fills you up, it's good grub. <laughs> uh. Happy birthday. Reach into your pocket. Your present's already in there. How'd I do it? <laughs> Just a little trick of the trade. Anyway, more importantly, I've booked us a real feast at Lombard's Tavern, so let's get ourselves over there. Huh? Oh, don't worry. I didn't invite any of the other mercs. Nah, that rowdy bunch is always getting into arguments. Not the kind of people you'd want at a birthday celebration. It'll just be me and you, like it should be. Oh, uh, <clears throat> uh, come on, come on, let's go. Huh, how about that? I really did get stronger. Hey, this feels good. I think I'll be able to hit quite a bit harder with my sword now. So much power. I have to go test this out. You down to spar with me or what? I never once imagined I could get to this level. All credit goes to you. What next? Do you have a job for me? Whatever it is, just say the word and I'll be there. <laughs>